Okay, so uh, we uh, turned to page Hey Amad Aleph 5a. Let's just go over for a few minutes the uh, previous uh, Gemara. The Gemara had uh, concluded uh, yesterday that um, in order to answer this argument, this contradiction between who the halacha follows, does it does the halacha follow Rabbi Yehuda or Rabbi Gamliel? Rabbi Gamliel is says that you begin asking for rain on the seventh day of Cheshvan. And Rabbi Yehuda and the Mishnah spoke about mentioning rain and that you start on Shemini Atzeres. And so we had this contradiction who the halacha follows. And we although the... Let me mute everyone. Thanks. And although the Gemara says that there's many differences between these two statements, one is talking about one rabbi, the other is talking about another rabbi, uh, one is talking about mentioning rain, the other is talking about asking for rain. Nevertheless, the Gemara seemed to um, um, conclude, seemed to be pretty convinced that it's all one, you know, that we, we, uh, we, uh, uh, we are, you know, we, we, when you, when you start mentioning, you have to start asking. When you stop uh, asking, you stop mentioning. So Mara understood that it's really, it's really one thing, even though it's, uh, one is mentioning, one is asking. The Gemara, uh, understood from Rabbi Yechanan. Initially, the Gemara thought maybe he only spoke about the end time is, is, is stops. Both of them stop at the same time. Then the Gemara said, no, we even they start at the same time. And then the Gemara wanted to differentiate between uh, Bavel, Babylon, and Israel. And that was one thought that the Gemara had. And then the Gemara said that logically Israel should also wait until the seventh of Cheshvan because they also are worried about the rain. And uh, for the people who are returning from their pilgrimage, for Sugas, Mara answered that uh, um, uh, Rabbi Yechel is talking about when the Beis Hamikdash was already destroyed. So when Eretz Yisrael, there's no one; the the people are not uh, doing a pilgrimage to uh, to uh, Yerushalayim um, at the holidays because there's no Beis Hamikdash, and therefore. Uh, there's a difference between Babylon and Israel. But then the Gemara says, no, you know what? Once we're explaining that part of the, one of the statements is talking about when there's no Beis HaMikdash, so we ought to just say that we're, that 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 really the main difference is if there's a Beis HaMikdash or no Beis HaMikdash. And forget about the previous answers and uh, we don't have to say that there's a difference between Babylon and Eretz Yisrael, but really what we could say is that they both, uh, at the same time, they will both uh, change. And um, um, when there's no Beis HaMikdash, they will change at Shemini Atzeres. And when there is a Beis HaMikdash, they change over and they start mentioning rain at Zion Chesh. So that was the... Uh, uh, concluding answer of the Gemara. And then the Gemara asked, what about us that have two days of Yom Tov? Uh, which day do we consider the Shmini Yatzeras? Now, which day should we really start mentioning? We know you mentioned Shmini Yatzeras, but which day, which day of Shmini Yatzeras? Because we, 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 we have two days. And one of them we call Simplus Tyra, but really that day is also really questionable if it's Shmini Yatzeras. So we have two options of Shmini Yatzeras. And uh, Rav and Shmuel, um, they both had interesting views. Rav had a view that you start Musaf, then stop from Mincha and Mairiv and Shachris, and then start again on Musaf on Simcha's Torah. So he had a very interesting view, and it had to do with the fact that, you know, it is questionable what they, you know, when to, when to start, because on the one hand, it is Shmini Atzeres. On the other hand, it's questionable. Maybe tomorrow Shmini Atzeres. So we do a Musaf on, on the first day, and then we wait till the next Musaf, and that, that was Rav's opinion. Shmuel said um, that that's not good because you are disgracing the holiday. How are you disgracing the holiday? You're disgracing the holiday by, you made it Yom Tov, you're calling it Shmini Atzeres, 
And now you're saying, no, but might be might be uh, only the seventh day and that's not a holiday. Might be only the seventh day of Shana Rabba. And therefore, you stop mentioning the rain. So you're disgracing it, implying like maybe it's not really Yantav. First you make it Yantav, then you disgrace it. Because at Mincha, in my uh, Mincha, you stop. So Shmuel says what you need to do is say it in Musaf, start at Musaf, then include Mincha as well. In this way, Shmini Atzeres, you made into a holiday. And then, Mairav and Shachras, then you could skip and don't do those because that day you never made into a holiday yet. And then you could start again at Musaf and then go for six months. You know, Then you could go from there for six months, mention the rain, and that's how you do it. And then we turned the page and we said, Rava has another uh, answer in his, uh, to this question of, as to when to begin in uh, outside of Israel, we have two days of Yom Tiv. Rava says that once you start, you don't stop. And Shesha said the same thing, that you start at Musaf and don't stop. And even Rav changed his mind and uh, retracted. And uh, because we have a statement from Rav Hananel in the name of Rav, that you count 21 days and then afterwards you start mentioning the rain. And that's the halacha the Gemara concludes. Hilchasach, since you start, you don't stop. So that's a summary of uh, yesterday's uh, Gemara. And we spoke a lot about a, a number of different things. One thing we mainly we spoke about was the uh, question as to, is there a mitzvah to be Euler Regel, to go to the Beis Hamikdash when there's uh, no Beis Hamikdash? Is there a mitzvah to go to Yushalayim? See your, show your face. Uh, that you're supposed to be seen by Hashem. Does that apply if there's no base on You're not going to bring a carbon. Is there a mitzvah to go anyway? Aliyah Laregel. Does it? Does there any element of of the mitzvah? Uh, and it seemed from our Gemara we said that there's no mitzvah to go, and that's why there was no reason to uh, come back with uh, uh, and worry be, worry about uh, rain on the way back if there's no base on That was the. Uh, you know, that was, a, was one of the things we saw in the Gemara. Another thing we discussed uh, was the question of uh, Mordechai about the uh, the uh, the time when you go for Pesach time. Why then uh, is there uh, not an issue of it raining when you're going? We mentioned a few answers to that as well. And um, uh, so basically uh, we are uh, going to begin this new Mishnah on page 5a, which talks about when do we stop asking for rain. So this is a new discussion. We really haven't discussed the end time of asking for rain much. We, we came up once, but now uh, the Mishnah spells it out, the two main opinions with their reason, and let's, let's do it inside Mish uh, uh Daf Hey page five A and um five A the Mishnah which is seven or eight lines from the top of the page seven lines from the top of the page Hey Amad Aleph Ad Masai Shail and Esa Gishamim until when do we ask for rain Reb Yehuda Eimer Ad Shiaver Al Pesach Reb Yehuda says until Pesach is over and what he means is the whole Pesach until uh. You know, the, you finish uh, finish Pesach. Pesach is over. But of course, we had interpretations in the Gemara that it maybe means something else. Maybe the carbon Pesach. Maybe it means the first day until the first day. But uh, the the uh, the simple understanding is until Pesach is over. That is when you ask for rain, and that's Rabbi Huda's view. Rabbi Meir Oimer Achiyeti Nisan. Rabbi Meir says until Nisan is over. Shnem, as it says, the Yered Lachem Geshem. And the rain will fall for you. Meira o Malkoish Berishon. The Yoira is the first rains. The Malkoish is the later rains. Berishon in the first month, in the month of Nisa. So, what is Reb Meir's proof? Reb Meir is saying that the whole month of Nisan is a time of rain. Why is it a time of rain? Because in the book of Yoel, it uh, mentions the uh, uh, fact that they had a famine for a number of years. 
And finally, the end of the famine, um, in Nisan time, it finally rained. And it rained, the Yoyre rain, the Malkish rain, in Nisan. And therefore, you see that Nisan is a time of rain. Now, the, the interesting thing is, when did it rain in Nisan? In, 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 in Yoel's time at that miracle that, that when that miracle occurred that they finally that they got rain after seven years of famine when did it rain so it rained on the first of Nisan and it rained on the fifth of Nisan that's when it rained so the question is how do you know the whole month is a is a month of rain maybe only the first and the fifth day are the month are 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 times of rain because that's when it rained over there. How does Mayer know that it really is a time of rain the entire month of Nisan? It, it's not exactly proving that the whole month it would seem that the it rained the year of in the first month, but what day? It rained on the first day and the fifth day. So fine. So those days are days of rain. You want to say the whole month is? It did, did rain the whole month. So one of the commentaries wants to say that because it doesn't tell us the day of the month, you know, in this Pasuk, where it should, it's giving us this hint that really it's a it's a time of 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 rain. And uh, now the entire month is a, is a time of rain. But there is another question on this, and that is that this was a miracle that happened. A miracle happened then that it rained. Shkoyach, does that mean that it's really a time? Is it really a time for, for rain? You know, it's in that time, they, they didn't have they had famine for seven years, so it rained. And it, that means that that's the right time. So, the the uh, the understanding is that at least one of the commentaries mentions this as well. That what Mayer's proof is, and it's based on Tysus over here. But that that Remeyer's proof, yes, Ben, what do you want to say? Didn't we have didn't we have a famine seven years in like King David's time? I think that was three years. It was only three years. Okay. So, uh, so the uh, uh, based on Tysus over here, that Remeyer's proof is going on Malkish, that the Yaira, which is the rain that's supposed to be much earlier in Cheshvan, in the month of Cheshvan, which is the month that we're in, that rain was a miracle. But the Malkish rain is supposed to be a Nisan. So the Malkish rain, which is meant to be in Rishon, that's not a miracle. That's the regular time for that rain. And the fact that it doesn't say specifically what day of Nisan, it's implying that the whole month is apropos for that rain. And therefore, he says that we should mention rain throughout, I'm sorry, ask for rain throughout that month. That is Remeyer's, uh, that's Remeyer's proof. Okay, now we're going to go to the Gemara. Amalei Rav Nachman, the Rav Yitzchok, Rav Nachman said to Rav Yitzchok, Yoyre Nisan, is Yoyre in the month of Nisan? The, the, the rain, that the early rain, is that meant to be a Nisan? Yoyre B'mar Cheshvan, who Yoyre is supposed to be in Cheshvan. The Tanya, because we learned in a Braisa, it talks about the Pasuk, that we have in the Shema. Venasati matar arzachem beita yera o malkoish ve asafta de ganecho ve siroshcho ve yatsarecho. So we talk about yera and malkoish every day in the Shema. And what does the Brisa uh, say about this pasuk? 
It says Yaira is Benachashva. Umalkoish is Benisan. So why is uh Yoel calling the rain that comes in Nisan, month of Nisan, why is he calling it Yaira when Yaira really is much earlier? Why is the Pasa calling this Yaira? So the Gemara says, Amar Lei, Rabbi Yitzchak answered Rab Nachman, Hachi Amar Rabbi Yechanan, this is what Rabbi Yechanan says, Bimei Yoyal ben Pesuel, in the days of Yoyal, the son of Pesuel, Niskaye Mikroze, it became fulfilled this puzzle. What, what is, who is Yoyal ben Pesu? Who is Pesuel? So, there are commentaries that say that Yoel is one of the sons of Shmuel Hanavi, and uh, Shmuel uh, Hanavi is called Pesuel because Pita Loel he appeased Hashem, he uh, seduced Hashem with his prayer. So, and um, um, we know that Shmuel Hanavi did have a son Yoel. So the Gemara says, so So the understanding is that uh, Yoel was the son of uh, of Shmuel Hanavi. And um, and the Gemara is, uh, is explaining that story. So let's continue. Bimei Yoel ben Pesuel, it was the days Tersiv Beya that it says about this, um, of this uh, this famine or this uh, situation, yes, sir. Hagazam, hagbazam, achal ho'arba. That the uh, whatever the locust left over, the um, the 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 the, uh, the other type of locust called the arba locusts, they ate. So whatever the gazem, there there are different types of locusts, and in fact, Sephardic people I think know the differences. Some of them are there. There are. Uh, uh, Different oh, sure grasses that are kosher, right? Uh, but <laughs> anyway, so so there's a few different terms. We, we know also about the different terms because Rashi and Chumash talks about it when it talks about the makas arba. So the uh, the Rashi has a contradiction because Rashi and Chumash, Rashi and Chumash brings a contradiction. He says, "Was this the worst?" It says in Yoel's time that the dead was the worst. Rashi mentions that Yoel's time there was different types. And the Chumash and the, the story of uh, the, the, the ten plagues that came upon Egypt, the, and the, that was only one type. But here, so there's Gezem and Arba. So the uh, the leftover, whatever the locust left over, the 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 Gezem locust, though the Arba ones, they uh, they ate up. So, um, so in that time, there was Yaira rain and there was Malkish rain. And um, and Oisa Shana. So, so in other words, um, what the Gemara is explaining is that there was a major, uh, uh, major uh, episode in that time where we had seven years of famine. There was a plague of locusts, and during that time, the Yoya the Yoira rain did rain at the wrong time. It rained. There, there, there was, it was after seven years of famine, it finally rained, but it was late. It, lay, it rained in the um, in Nisan, so it's not a it's not a, a problematic verse. It's telling you the facts that the the year that normally rains uh, much earlier in Cheshvan, it rained that year. It rained in Nisan. So Oisa Shana Yotza Adar Yardu Gesham says that year the month of Adar came, and there was still no rain. And um, Yarda Lahem Raviri Shaina Bachad Nisan on the first day of Nisan, the first rainfall finally came. And it's called the uh, Ravia, the Ravia Rishaina, the first rain, because it sort of uh, it uh, gives see it, 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 it makes the growth. Um, and to the uh, to the plants, so um, uh, so it says it was the first rain was on the first of Nisan. Amar lehem navli Yisrael 
So the prophet told Klai Yisrael, which who's the prophet? Yoel. And he told Klai Yisrael, Tzu, Viziru, go and plant. Now you have to think about this. They hardly have any food. Seven years they've been suffering. And now they're going to take whatever little grain they have and they're going to go plant it. Amrulai, so they said to Yayo, Mishi Yesh Lekav, Chitim, Chabayim Sayyid, a person has a, a little, uh, an amount, a, a measure of Kav of, of Chitim, or, or two Kavs of Sayyid, Chitim is wheat, Sayyid is barley. Yechlenov Yechia, should he eat it and live? A Yezrenov Yamas, or should he plant it and die? Because if he plants it, it's not, he doesn't have food. Amar lahem, Yoel said, Apal pikein su'u b'ziru. Nevertheless, go and plant. Nasa lahem neis. A miracle happened. V'nis gale lahem, masha b'ksolim, masha b'chari nebalim. And it was discovered, it was revealed, what was that? Well, there was some grain in the walls and in the holes of the ants. And they they actually had a little extra. Yatsu Vizaru, they went and they planted the fields on the third the second day of Nisan, Shani, Shlishi, or Raviyi, the second, the third, and the fourth day of Nisan. And so they planted them. The Yardolahem Ravia Shniya Bahamisha Benisa. And then the second rain, which we'll call we'll call Malkoish, that rained on the fifth of Nisan. Hikrivu Aimer. Bishisha also Benisan, they brought the Yomer on the 16th day of Nisan. Nimtis Tavua Hagadela Bishisha Hadoshim came out that grain that normally takes six months to grow. Gedela Beachod Asher Yom, it grew in 16 days, which means, uh, I'm sorry, in 11 days, Gedela Beachod Asher, Echod Asher is 11. 11 days, it grew in 11 days because from the 5th day to the 16th day is 11 days. Nimtza Oimer HaKarev Mitvua Shal Shisho Chadashim came out that the Oimer, which is the sacrifice called the Oimer, that they take barley, barley that they uh, use for the sacrifice they do, that's for we when Sphere's HaOimer is when we start counting from when they bring that sacrifice of the of the Oimer, the Oimer sacrifice, which is on the 16th day of Nisan, they uh, bring sacrifice of, of barley. So that's from the, the from the new barley. So they need the new barley for that. The Oimer that was brought from the grain of the 16th of the of six months, which is normally brought from grain that's six months, uh, that grew over six months. Karev mitvua, it is brought from grain Shall Acharas or Yaim of eleven days? Val Oisei Hadar Oimer on that generation. It says Hazayrim Bedima those that plant with tears. Verina Yekzayru they will harvest with joy. So let's just think for a second. What happened here? There was this famine. Then after seven years. The Navi told them to plant. And uh, they uh, they planted, but they, they didn't want to plant because they didn't, they 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 were nervous. They plant, they're not gonna have any grain for food. The Navi told them plant anyway. And so um, from the wording of the Gemara, it seems that when they found the um, it, it, it says it, it was revealed to them uh, what was hidden in the uh, in the walls, maybe or in the hole, the ant holes. So then they found grain. And then they planted. That's the sim the, the simply uh, the, uh, the you know the uh, the way it's the way the order that it says it, but. Um, um, it seems that really it was the opposite order. Why does it seem it was the opposite order? 
Well, I'll tell you why. In other words, I'm, I'm asking, which order was it? How, how exactly did they do it? Did they first plant and they trusted Yoel? Or did they wait when Yoel told them, Yoel Hanav, when he told the people to plant, even though you don't have food, go plant. Did they trust him and plant? And then afterwards they found the, the, uh, uh, the grain, they found in ant holes, they found grain. Or did they first find grain, grain in the ant holes and then they planted? So if you look at the, what's the, uh, the Gemara say that we, we see this from a verse, from a Pusuk. What does the Pusuk say? It says, Hazoyrim Bedima. They planted with tears, but they harvested with joy. What, what does that mean that they planted with tears? Why did they plant with tears if they had enough? They have enough to plant and enough to, to eat. So why did they plant with tears? So seemingly from the Pusuk, what the Pusuk means to be saying is that they planted with tears because they knew that they are planting what they're supposed to be eating. They don't have what to eat and they're planting it anyway because the Navi told them to. So they planted with tears, but bar, but a miracle happened right after they planted that they got that 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 they got uh, grain, that they got grain from the um, from the hole. So in other words, from the pasuk, it does seem like it's uh, emphasizing that they really planted uh, before they even found the new stuff, the new grain. And if you learn that way, it comes out that they had tremendous amuna. Tremendous faith in Hashem, that they trusted Hashem, that they would they planted, and uh, even though they didn't have food to eat, but they planted it. They took the grain that they should have been eating, and they planted it, and uh, a miracle happened that they found right afterwards. Hashem made a miracle that they found right afterwards these uh, the grain inside the walls and inside the uh, ant holes, and they were able to to have what to eat. Um, and then the, the grain that they planted was grew real fast within eleven days. And they and they uh, and they um, celebrated this great, uh, this uh, tremendous uh, miracle that Hashem did for them. If you want to learn the other way, which you could, the other way is that really uh, they 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 didn't plant right away, but they first found the extra stuff in the in the grand holes walls. Then they planted, and uh, the pasuk says they planted with 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 tears, even though they had enough for now. But it's still very tear. They were very sad because uh, who knows what's going to happen in the next few days? You know, they might they might have enough today. What's going to happen in a week from now or a month from now? So uh, you can still learn maybe that uh, you know that that the pasuk. Uh, uh, it means that Bedima, they planted with tears because they were planting stuff that they should eat in two weeks, in a month. And so therefore they're crying. But there is an interesting question on this, uh, Gemara, that what did they use to bring the Yomer? They used this grain that grew in 11 days. Now, there is such a concept of not doing a mitzvah with a miracle item. In other words, if you create a golem, uh, you know, or you create, uh, uh, let's say you create grain, you can't use that, or you create oil, you created oil, somehow you said some Kabbalistic words, and you caused olive oil to appear. Can you use that olive oil to light your menorah? So there is a concept that you can't do a mitzvah with a miracle. In fact, in Lubavitch, there's a very famous story where uh, the Alter Rebbe was taken for interrogation when he was imprisoned, and they took him on a boat for the interrogation. They took him on a boat to, uh, to the interrogation location, which was over the river. They took him there. While he was on the boat, he wanted to say Kiddush Levana. And uh, so he told the captain, stop, you know, it was a small little boat. He told the captain, you know, stop, I need to say a prayer. So the captain said, what? We're going to listen to you, you criminal. We're not, we, don't, we don't stop the boat if you ask us to stop it. So the Alter Rebbe told him, the Alter Rebbe stopped the boat 
miraculously and the, couldn't move. And uh, um, and uh, but the Alter Rebbe did not say Kiddush Lavana then. He stopped the boat and proved to the captain that if he wants to stop it, he can stop it. And then they started it again and it went a little further. And the, he told the, the captain, he says, okay, now stop it. So then the captain understood that if he doesn't stop it, the Alter Rebbe can stop it himself. So the captain stopped the boat. So then the Alter Rebbe said, Kiddush Levana. Why did the Alter Rebbe say Kiddush Levana the first time around when he himself stopped the boat? Because you don't do a mitzvah with something miraculous. So the Alter Rebbe had the power to stop the boat. But you know, he didn't want to do the mitzvah on, uh, with with a miracle. He did the mitzvah when the when the captain stopped the boat. That's when you do the. That's when he did the mitzvah. It's along the same lines, there are sources for such a concept that you don't you can't use a uh, a miracle uh, to, to you can't do a mitzvah with a with with a miraculous thing. So, of course, the question is, what about the story of Hanukkah? <laughs> is that what you're asking, Yehuda? Hello? Well, that, that also, no, I was going to say, what about the story of Pesach? When, when uh, Moshe, well, Hashem uh, split the sea. And what was the merit, what was the mitzvah that they did then? They they escaped. No, we, we can use miracles, but the act of a mitzvah is supposed to be done with the physical world. It's, it's an element, uh, it's a concept of what is the purpose of mitzvahs. Mitzvahs are supposed to be done in this physical world. Right, right. And, and the um, the idea of doing the mitzvahs in the physical world um, are it, 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 it not accomplished if you use a miracle to do it. You're not oh, really I, I elevating the world. Yeah, you know, that's the concept. So the fact that they escape, yeah, to use any miracle you can have, no problem. But to do a mitzvah, to to do it in a you know to act to use it as a mitzvah, that's problematic. In other words, to uh, okay create oil and use it, that would be problematic. When it comes to the story of Hanukkah, there's a whole discussion of exactly how the miracle of of the oil happened. Did the oil just not burn? But the oil was there, so the right. oil was there. It just never burned. So then it's not, the miracle was that it didn't burn, but the actual oil was oil, you know, was regular oil. Or right. did it burn out and new oil came and that would be miraculous oil and then it might be a problem to use to light the menorah. But because I don't think that's what happened. Because they're using miraculous oil. What? But I don't think that's what happened. Well, I'm saying, so there's discussion about how to how to explain the miracle of Hanukkah right, right. in order to get around this, this issue. Yes, yeah. uh, Ben. I wanted to say that the way you tell the story, there were two miracles. One, they found the seeds in the walls and the, and the end things. That's a miracle. Sure. Because the ants usually take the seeds, use seeding, and, and takes them into the holes. In that season, it's not like there were seeds there from last year. Right. Where'd they get so the seeds? That's seed? one miracle. And then the miracle of growing, it's already a second miracle. So I don't know if that's really the, the way the story went. Well, I'm, I'm just translating the Gemara. I didn't add anything. Yeah, to yeah. Gemara. I'm, just, I'm just reading the Gemara. That's, uh, I don't have the, uh, the license to add anything to that story. That, because... that, that was just a simple translation. Because they seeded it late, but the right. rain came immediately after the seeding. Mm -hmm. So maybe usually the, it takes a while for the rain to get there. And that's why it takes longer to grow. This time the rain came right after the seeding. So it was a shorter season for the growth. Mm -hmm. So it maybe it can be explained differently is what I'm saying. You know, that, because if they don't bring the the omer, if they don't bring the omer, the Kohens and Levis are going to be hungry, right? Not exactly. The omer was a small little uh, sacrifice of some barley. It didn't. It, yeah, it, but it's but not, still, not they have to bring it for them to eat, isn't it? 
No, no, no. The Omer was a small little sacrifice. Okay. Very mad. Uh, so, um, what, what did you say, Ezra? I said it was symbolic of the fact that Hashem right. has provided for them. That's, that's what... Right, symbolic. Okay, I didn't have the one. Um, so the um, uh, the answer to this question is that the the grain grew in a miraculous, it grew fast, but it grew. It was not created. It was not a miraculous. It wasn't an actual the grain. Was not a miracle that appeared that there was grain. It was grain that grew from the ground. It happened to grow in a fast way. So the miracle was in how fast it grew, but not in the fact that it didn't grow and it was just appeared. You know what I mean? So it wasn't grain. At least this is a, one of the commentaries explains it. It was grain that's not called grain of a miracle because the, the, the miracle was just how long it took, but it wasn't the actual item. The item was not an item, a miracle item. In any event, uh, so here we have this story of the grain um, uh, uh, growing in a very short time period. And um, and on this, the Pasuk says, Hazayrim bedima berina yekzayru, they they were rejoicing when they when they reaped the uh, when they reaped the the grain when they reaped this uh, the grain. Now the Pazak says continue the Gemara continues and brings the continuation of the that cup of that chapter of Tehillim. He walks along. Crying, noisei meshach azara, carrying the uh, container of the seeds, and what does this refer to? My halach yelech uvachai noisei meshach. What does that mean? That he walks along crying, carrying the container. Amar Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda says, "Shor kishuhu chayresh halach uvaycha." When the ox was plowing. He was going and crying. And when he uh, returned, in other words, on his way back, on his return, he would eat the uh, new uh, grain, the, the, the beginning of the, the, of the growths from the furrow. Vizehu, and that is what it means. By Yavai Verina, he will return with joy. The sprouts. The sprouts. The little the sprouts. So that's the meaning of this continuation of, of the Pasuk. And uh, the problem that the Gemara had with this Pasuk was that it seemed repetitious. It said Hazoyrim Bedima Verina Yuksayru, that they that they uh, planted with crying. Then it says again, they cried when they went, carrying and bearing the, the, the container of seeds. So what it means is that it was plowing um, while they were seeding it at the same time he was plowing it. In other words, I guess, uh, is that is that the way it's done? That they plow, that they pour the seed right while it's being plowed? They, they put it's the good seed to in? cover it. Behind, I, behind, I behind it. it. What'd you say, Ezra? Well, when when you're when you're moving the plow through, it's it's difficult. So the animal is actually has this load that's upon him. That's probably the reason why he cries. But then people behind him are basically dropping the seeds into the furrow, and uh -huh. probably somebody comes behind him and closes up, closes up the furrow so that the seeds are now covered. They go through the uh -huh. process of whatever. Right. Right. So, um, so the Gemara says, what is the meaning of my noise alu of carrying sheaves, alu of his sheaves? What does that mean, carrying his sheaves? So the Gemara says, Amarav Chizda, Varmilav Masisa Tana, Kana Zeres, the stalk 
was the size of a zeres, and the shibayles, the ear, was the size of zeresayim, two zereses. And um, now normally the stalk is three or four times the size of the ear. And here, the stalk of grain was one, was, 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 was half the size of the ear. So I guess what it means is that it was a lot of grain relative to how big the stalk was. It was a tremendous, it was a great miracle. And, um, uh, Rashi brings this that there was a nace godel, he says. Now, um, and again, I'm not I, I don't really understand grain that I don't, we're not, you know, we're living in the industrial world, we don't see how grain grows, but I'm guessing, but I think that's what it means that the that the the stalk is normally much uh, the the uh, the 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 uh, the 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 um. The stalk is normally much. The amount of seeds it produced is double. Is not much the stalk. Right. Okay. The, but the stalk normally is much bigger than the uh, than 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 the, the ear of grain because this the but the stalk is not worth anything. Right. Right. But under under stalk grows the grain. So, but if double grows, then you get uh, you get double. But I think what it's emphasizing is that the, the, the grain was double the size of the stalk, which means that it was even much, much more than 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 you would imagine. I don't know. I really never dealt with, with uh, wheat. And, because the and stalk bugs. is nice and big, and then the, the grain is yeah. a tiny little thing. And here, the, the, the grain was double the, was double the size. Uh, anyway, that's what it seems like. I'm going to say, I'm not 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 going to what is the meaning of what it says that Hashem called a famine and he came and it and it came and the Gamba El Haaretz and it came upon the land for seven years. What did they eat during those seven years? A very sad story. The Amar Lei Hachi Amar Rabbi Yechon and this is what Rabbi Yechon said: Shana Mishayna Achlu Mashab Batim. The first year they ate what they stored in the house. Shnia Achlu Mashab Asodays. The second year they ate what there was in the field. Shlishas Besar Behemah Tahira. The third year they ate animals, kosher animals. Rabbiyas Besar Behemah Tmeya. The fourth year they ate treif animals. Chamishas Besar Shkatsim Merumasim. The fifth year they ate um, um, Shkatsim. These uh, creeping creatures. Shkatsim Merumasim. And Shisha's Basar Benayim, they say him in the sixth year, they ate the flesh of their sons and their daughters. And the seventh year, Basar Zraya say him, they ate the flesh of their own arms. The Kayim Mashanem are fulfilling what it says in the Pasuk, Ish Basar Zraya Yechelu, that each person will eat the Basar, um, the, um, the, the meat. Of their arms. Uh, and now Rav Nachman asks Rav Yitzchak, another, another, another discussion. So the uh, Gemara initially um, spoke about, started with Rav Nachman speaking to Rav Yitzchak about the Yero Malkosh. And then we spoke about that, um, the Psukim. From the Shir Hamalois uh, that go coincide with that story, then they spoke about the uh, the uh, the seven years of the famine, and now Rabbi Nachman Bar Yitzchok talks about another pasuk, something else, a different different topic. So now we jump to another topic for those that were getting uh, very nervous about the uh, the rain, mentioning rain, and asking for rain. We have a new topic. We're on page five a, and we're at. What does it mean that I will uh, in your midst uh, there is something holy and I will not enter the city. 
What does that mean? Normally, if something's holy, I will enter the city. Because there's something in your midst that's holy, I'm not going to come into the city. Amar lay, so Yitzchak answered, Rav Nachman, this is what Rabbi Yechonon says. Amar Kodesh Baruch Hu Hashem said, I will not go into the Jerusalem of heaven until I answer, until I enter the Yerushalayim of below. What does this mean? That uh, until I, uh, I enter the, the lower Jerusalem, uh, I will not go into the city of, in other words, until it's until in your midst is Kadesh, I will not go into my city above and um, until you are redeemed from Golos and uh, the Shechina is in, is in Yushalayim, only then will I uh, find will I enter my uh, presence uh, in the heavenly home? At least that's one of the pshatim. Now, Amar um, le, I'm sorry, Umi Eko Yerushalayim Lumayla. Is there a Jerusalem above? What is what does this refer to? That's an interesting, but I mean, just thinking about that story, about that that translation. Until I come to uh, Jer Jerusalem, of, I won't enter this the city of Jerusalem above until I uh, set up the base of Migdash, and, and which which makes it sound it's an interesting shot that it means Hashem is Shechina is going to be mainly in the Yushalayim Shalomaylo once the base of Migdash is built. That's a, it's an interesting shot. It's from the Ion Yaakov that shot. I don't know if that's uh, the common understanding. If that's what he means, it sounds a little strange. Like Avay Yerushalayim shall Maila until I come to Yerushalayim shall Mato. So the Gemara asks, "Umiyika Yerushalayim l'Maila? Is there really a Yerushalayim of above?" And the Gemara answers, "In there is one." There is a Yerushalayim above. The Chsiv Yerushalayim Habnuya Yerushalayim that's built up Ke'ir like the city Shechubra Layachtov that's attached to it together. So what it implies is that there's another city uh, that's uh, attached to Yerushalayim and that is the uh, Yerushalayim that's above. I just want to see if there's another Gemara here. Let me see if they... Rabbi, you jumped what they ate in the first year, second year, third year, fourth year. We did that. Okay. Yeah. Because I see Behema, Behemat Mea, and I'm surprised that they had to eat Behemat Mea. What about what it says after it? It's shocking. Hamishit Besar Shkatsim, yeah. No, what, what about after that? The Ramasim, the or oh, Bazar Bnehem of Nakim. Whoa. Was there a time like that? That's what it says during that during that time. They bring here, I'm just I was just uh, looking up over here on this uh I have a, a Gemara that has a lot of commentaries that it brings from the Orhachayim. That even though the main shechina is Baal Yoinim in the above worlds, nevertheless Hashem's joy, Hashem cherishes more Yushalayim Shel Mato, which is the place for Shechinosay Shebatachtoinim, and because the Ikar Brias Ha'olam is be, the main creation is be, is for the lower worlds, which is his name where Hashem's nation is and his inheritance. So it says Hashem will not enter the shechina above until he bring until he comes to the Shechina below. But it, it does seem surprising. What is the purpose of the 
Shechina being above, well, like what, 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 why does Hashem go into the higher worlds if his main, um, if his, uh, if his main cherishing is the uh, is below? And it's also interesting that that the Orachayim here. I have to look up that Orachayim that he says Ikar Shechinas Hakadosh Baruch Hu Bal Yoyin. The main Shechina is in the higher worlds, which, um, which, maybe in the time of, of Golas is that way. But it really, Iker Shechina Batachtainim Haisa says there is a medrash that says the main Shechina was in the lower worlds, and that's where Hashem uh, has a desire for the Shechina to be. So maybe what it means is, I will not enter the Yushalayim above until I, which, which the until I enter the Yushalayim below, which means that even though the Shechina is above, um, uh, there's Shechina in the higher world, Hashem doesn't want to enter it until there's really, the, the Shechina is, until I come to Yushalayim Shalomata, until the Shechina is really below, and that's the place where I cherish. So in other words, even though maybe in the, maybe that's what it means, that even in the time of Golis, when the, the Shechina maybe is more in the higher world, I don't want to, I'm not going there until I really go into Yushalayim Shalomata, that in other words, all I really want is Yushalayim Shalomata, even in the time of Golos. Maybe that's the meaning. I have to look up this uh, or Chaim. But Galut, he went with us. And that's also true. Right. So it's, it's a little hard to say that the Shechina, Iker Shechina is in the higher world. He, says, he brings it from an Ar Chaim, in Horatius. So the, the Ramban has another shot here. He says, that Hashem says, I can't rejoice, I can't uh, have pleasure until I come to Yushalayim Shalomata because Hashem's in pain because of uh, um, um, that the Shechina is in pain um, uh, whenever the Yidin are in Golis. And so that's the meaning. I won't enter Yushalayim Shalomailo, which basically means Hashem doesn't have any enjoyment until he comes to Yushalayim, until Beis Hamikdash is rebuilt. There's no real enjoyment. Again, this is homiletic uh, uh, Gemaras. Is a, I got it's called the God of the Gemaras. They're sometimes very hard to understand. And we have to like uh, uh, these. This is where the secrets of the Torah are hidden in these Gemaras. So you got to like uh, work hard on trying to uh, decipher what they mean. And any in any event, the Gemara does say that there's Yushalayim above and Yushalayim below, and uh, below, and they're attached. And um, the simple understanding of uh, this idea is that that there's really uh, the base Hamigdash is built already in heaven. And that idea maybe is, is what it says. I will not go into the Yushalayim above until I enter Yushalayim be below means that mean, would, would seemingly mean that I am not going to bring down the base Hamigdash from above until it's ready and I can enter the base Amigdash below, I can bring it down below, then I'll bring it down. In other words, there is a base Amigdash, there's a Yushalayim above that's that's ready to be brought. And it's waiting, or every time we do a mitzvah, we add a brick onto that base Amigdash. And so it's Hashem, there's a big discussion, who is Hashem building the base Amigdash? Is Mashiach building the base Amigdash? And uh, there are different sources where it says different things. And uh, the Rebbe has, a, has an insight that it's the base Amigdash is really built by Hashem, the third base I'm English talking about, really built by Hashem, but the Mashiach is going to do, or the or the Bnei Yisrael, they'll they'll put on the door because if you do the door, it's considered like you if you uh, attach the door, the the uh, the uh, the lock, the key, you, it's considered as if you uh, you built it. So in other words, both and it's not contradictory really, even though they're contradictory statements because really it's the Abister who. It's building based on Migdash above, and uh, ultimately uh, the little that will need to be done below that will be considered like we built it as well, or like Mashiach built it. So that's the uh, maybe the meaning over here that I won't enter Yushalayim above, meaning I won't bring down the base on Migdash until Shalmat, until I can I can enter the Yushalayim below. In other words, that'll be fit for the Shechina, and then I will be able to bring down the base on Migdash that's above, and that's what it means. There's a there's a Yushalayim that's built above that is waiting to be uh, to come down. I have to see if, if the Rebbe brings this uh, Gemara and that Sicha, those Sichas that he talks about this. Yes, uh, Ben. Yeah, I was just wondering, uh, 
I, I wanted to say now that you said that the, sometimes the Gemara is amaletic, yeah. maybe that answers the question I had before. How would God make us eat something that's not, that told us not to eat it? Why would he force us to eat it? Listen, I, I, I wish that that Gemara was not literal, but it does sound to be very literal where, it, you know, he, he, it seems like there's a tradition of that story, but I wish, I, you know, I the can't same thing is the other, people, the, other part, the other years. I can see people eating their own hand or, or you know, your, their own. Well, I mean, anyway, they during would, the they would catch, maybe they, they would catch some animals or some other people, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't eat their own hand. You know. All I know is that I once heard from a Holocaust survivor that was uh, uh, doing the march at the end of when they at the end of the war, when yeah. they marched people for miles and miles, and they had nothing to eat, uh, that they would lie down on the uh, on the snow and the ground. And the, the great joy they had was when they were able to kill uh, uh, some type of a. Uh, that's what uh, I'm saying. Yeah. Or, you know, so they had that, that. That that's what it reminded me of when I saw that. Uh, you that would they eat grass. Shkutim. You would eat grass before you eat before you eat your own hand. Yeah, but they ate shkutim the and the flesh of the sons and they daughters. Hand. What? The flesh of the sons and daughters. <laughs> that's on a very six day. Day. on the sixth yeah. year. That's from it. Yeah, that's from it. Listen, <laughs> from the tochacha. So, and it happened. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, let's continue. So we have the next Gemara here. Well, gonna, what? Ne the next, uh, the next Gemara is the Amar Lei Rav Nachman the Rav Yitzchak. Nachman said to Rav Yitzchak, "My dechsev uva'achas yivaru yivaru v'yichsalu musar havolim etu." That with one ba'achas, with one yivaru, um, um, that ba'achas yivaru v'yichsalu musar havolam eitzu. What does this mean? They are completely um, um, foolish and stupid, and a musar havolam eitzu, a rebuke of worthlessness. Each one is wooden. Amar lei hachi amar Rabbi Yechanan. So Rabbi Yitzchak said, but this is what Rabbi Yechanan explained. Achas he shem avaeres rishon begehenim. There's one sin that causes the wicked to burn in Gehenim. Maihi, what is that sin? Avoid zara. That is the sin of idol worship. Siv hacham moser havalim eitzu. It says here that there's moser. Havalim, a rebuke of uselessness. A2, uh, it is wood, or each is wood. And it says over there about Avaidazara, about idol worship, Sivasam Hevel, Hema, Maise, Tatuim, that they are Hevel, they are worthless, they are vanity. Maise, uh, Tatuim, a work of delusion. So, this is that that is what it says about Avodah Zara. So the Gemara is understanding, and maybe we'll have to go into exactly how to interpret this pasuk. But this the 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 general idea is that idol worship is the um, is is basically a very severe avera that causes the rishayim to burn in Gehenim. This is one avera of idol worship. Ba'achas, that's the meaning of ba'achas, with one sin, yivaru, they will burn. And Musar Havala Meitzu, it's from this sin of idol worship. And I guess we'll continue tomorrow, Mirza Hashem, Zai everyone. Have a Thank wonderful you. day. Okay. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi.